Okay, Alien Romulus, should you watch this movie? That's what I will answer for you. Okay, let's see if I can do this in uh, less than 10 minutes. Um, the answer to the question, should you watch this movie, really depends on your experience with the Alien movies. So for myself, I've watched pretty much all the Alien movies, maybe except for Alien vs. Predator Requiem. But every other Alien movie I've watched, some of them multiple times, I'm a big fan of the first two Alien movies. So keep that context in mind. Um, if you've never seen an Alien movie before, I think you're going to find Alien Romulus to be a pretty good uh, science fiction horror movie. Uh, if you have seen uh, Prometheus and Alien Covenant, then I would say you'd still find uh, Alien Romulus to be pretty good. It may come across as a, a side story in the context of the previous two uh, Ridley Scott movies. If you've seen uh, pretty much all of the other Alien movies, including the original trilogy and Alien Resurrection, uh, Alien Romulus is going to feel a little tired and a bit of a retread. And also, it'll feel like a side story as well. Uh, all in all, um, as someone who's watched uh, most of the Alien films and is a big fan of the uh, original four Alien movies, I did find, uh, I mean, I found, I was a little disappointed with Alien Romulus. It was a decent way to spend uh, a slightly overcast Sunday afternoon, but I left the theater feeling a little bit wanting. Let me try to explain. So, to set up the movie, um, it's, it's about uh, a group of space miners that work for Weyland yutani the big bad corporation in the uh, alien cinematic universe. Uh, these space miners are very young. They're all in their, like, 20s. Uh, they're, they all seem extremely young. And that may bother some people, but for me, it was fine. Um, so they're all space miners. They're looking to escape what is basically indentured servitude to Willie Nutani. Um, the main character, Rain, played by Kaylee Spaney. She is due to basically pay off her debt, uh, to, uh, Willie Nutani, and that will allow her to travel off the, uh, mining colony, uh, and, and, you know, go to greener pastures and actually see some daylight because where they work at the mining colony, there's never any daylight. It's perpetually dark. Uh, she's denied her request. She's actually uh, just screwed over by the company. So she has to work another five years before she can pay off her debt or, you know, fulfill her contract and, and be released uh, to live her life. So it just so happens that, um, one of her friends finds out about a decommissioned uh, space station in orbit above the uh, the planet where they're on, where they're doing the mining. Uh, and uh, it's a decommissioned uh, Whaling Yutani space station. And so he gets the her friend gets this bright idea that oh, there's some cryopods that are still working on this space station, or there must be. So we just take our uh, space mining ship up there, dock get into the space station and grab those crowd pods. And then we can ch just chart a course to whatever fabulous new planet that we want to go to, leave our life of slavery, uh, you know, uh, slaving for the man behind. And we use these crowd pods because, you know, this, this planet that we want to go to is light years away. So that's, that's the whole setup for why they, they leave their, their, uh, <laughs> their day today and set off on this adventure all right so they go to the space station and surprise surprise is actually uh, a Weyland yutani research lab and surprise surprise get guess what they were researching uh aliens are our friendly neighborhood xenomorph so and on and on it goes so uh 
the setup is very simple, like extremely simple. And um, I'm gonna talk, but I'm gonna go back to that when I kind of go into my key arguments about why I was disappointed with the movie, the whole expectations versus reality, right? But I'll just talk a bit more about the uh, the cast, the characters. Overall, the characters are no good. Uh, the central cast is like very small, so ultimately the body count isn't very high. Well, that's fine, right? Uh, the original Alien had also had a very small cast, but you got to remember that they took the time in that movie to really develop their personalities. Uh, not so much in Romulus. In Romulus, there's a lot of build-up to when, you know, shit hits the fan. But they don't use this time wisely to actually make characters that you care about. Uh, all the characters in Romulus are one note. You have the main character, Rain, who is actually kind of bland um, when I think about her. But the the only thing that I can really hang my hat on in terms of feeling a bond with Rain is that she has this interesting relationship with a character named Andy, who who is an android. This is not a spoiler. It's revealed very within minutes of the movie opening that uh, Andy is an android. And they have this sister-brother relationship. Now, the problem with Andy, I see it as a problem, is that Andy is like a defective android, or he's like a, a lower-grade model android. And so he's almost, he's almost like, <laughs> it's almost like Rain Man, or he's got some development, developmental disorder. And he, he basically acts like a bipedal uh, puppy dog for most of the movie. He goes through some transformations later in the movie. I won't spoil anything. By the way, no spoilers whatsoever in this review. I should have said that right off the bat. But uh, I'm not used to these uh, uh, YouTube reviews, so please forgive me. No spoilers. So really, yeah, uh, everyone else is really unlikable or extremely one-note. And you don't care about them. You don't really care if they live or die. They're just devices. They're just bodies moving around with some motivations. But then ultimately, I don't care about anything. I don't care about anyone, really. Um, Alien 1, I cared very much about what happened to Ripley, obviously. Aliens, you, you're introduced, introduced to a whole bunch of Marines. Uh, sure, some of them are fodder and very uh, disposable. But a core group of them... They took the time to develop their characters. You cared about them. You cared uh, about whether they lived or died. There were stakes involved. Now, um, going to, I guess, my central argument before this review gets way too long. Expectations versus reality. Now, why was I disappointed with the movie? Even though I did have a good time, I would say it was like a decent... If you just want to shut off your brain watch some a very nice looking movie uh decent effects and just have a decent time see the xenomorphs on the big screen once again you could do a lot worse you don't really have a lot of options <laughs> alien romulus is in theaters go go check it out if you just want to have a decent two hours turn the brain off the thing is though they marketed marketed this movie as a return to the original Alien movies, right? You're talking Alien 1, Aliens, and Alien 3 to a certain extent. This was a supposed to be a return to form for the franchise. I think people were... When you look back on Prometheus and Covenant, I think people were kind of soured with how those movies turned out. Um... And what this movie was supposed to do was to take us back to the roots, where it's like straight up science fiction horror movie. Get your scares in. It's not talking about, you know, the origin story of the alien. It's not talking about the black goo. It's not talking about engineers. Just have a bunch of people in peril being chased by aliens. Going back to a simpler time of science fiction horror. And the movie does this it tries quite hard to do this but after watching it in hindsight i don't think that was the right move 
right? It's going back to the roots, and then now the, the, the rub of it is that it now begs comparison to the original movies, namely Alien and Aliens. But you can throw Alien 3 and Resurrection in there too, actually. And those comparisons don't do this movie that many favors, if I'm being quite honest. In fact, if Romulus were to strike out in the same direction and to, f to basically follow up on Promethe Prometheus and Covenant, I think then I might have a different opinion of it. Because then we're talking about evolving the franchise along a new era, which is the Prometheus Covenant era. And then we're actually talking about taking the franchise somewhere new, somewhere into the future. By going back to the past, you know, it just, it just begs comparison to Alien and Aliens for me. And it does not stack up, not even close. So you're probably thinking, well, what, you know, what's wrong with just trying to emulate or recreate that magic from the original Alien movies, right? Um, it just... It just seems like it's checking out boxes in a way. And after Prometheus and Covenant, it doesn't seem like it's enough, strangely enough, where you have a simple story with a bunch of people in peril, chased by aliens. It's almost too simple now. It's too old fashioned. After we've experienced the ambition of Prometheus and Covenant. I really do not think I would be saying this, but, but here I am. Uh, and I now understand why 20th Century Fox and Willie Scott bet big on this change of direction with Promethe Prometheus and Covenant, right? And they did this because there was actually some lore to explore in the Alien universe, and the series needed to evolve beyond just the Oh, we're just stuck on a spaceship or stuck on a space station with aliens. Deal with it, right? It gets tired. We did Alien on a ship. We did Aliens on a space colony versus Marines. We did Alien on a prison planet, and the alien is a hybrid of a dog. And then uh, <laughs> Alien Resurrection, we went back to multiple aliens on a space station, but instead of marines, you have a bunch of scoundrels and brigands. Space pirates, basically. So, where else can you go? The Xenomorph, also, as the boogeyman, doesn't have the same impact that it had back in the 80s and 90s. It's just a matter of fact now. Like, if you've never seen an alien movie, it's gonna look terrifying. But I swear to you, unless you're super young and super not plugged in at all, you have at least seen a Xenomorph somewhere. I mean, there's a bunch of alien games out on the market, too. There's Alien Isolation uh, last year. Alien Dark Descent came out. The Xenomorph, the, the, how the Xenomorph looks and what it does and what it's, what it's all about, it's out there. So there's no, there's no mystery. There's no mystique around this creature anymore. And that's what sort of made Prometheus work, too, because you didn't see a Xenomorph until the very end. And until then, it was like different sort of permutations of what this alien virus was about, like the black goo. Like, it wasn't... It was more mysterious, and that's what actually excited me. That's what I liked about Prometheus, because you didn't see the standard Xenomorph for the almost the entirety of the movie. So... To kind of roll back around to my central argument, Romulus is just a bit too surface level, where it's just a romp with aliens, whereas Prometheus and, and even Covenant, they had something else going on besides shooting aliens and running away from aliens. They, they try to ask questions, they try to present other themes. Uh, you know, there's David, there's a whole thing of David, there's a whole thing about his god complex, how he's like a, an extension of um, Wayland's personality, 
and the whole stuff, the engineers, like, that's interesting stuff. Never mind how that stuff was executed or how it gelled together in the end. These are flawed movies. I'll give. I'll. I'll, I'll say right now, Prometheus and Covenant, definitely flawed movies. But now I'm looking back on them. I'm thinking, hey, <laughs> maybe they weren't so bad after all. Maybe they're onto something, and we didn't need to try and do like a, like a cheap knockoff of the first two Aliens, right? Uh. I don't want to sound like I'm just like crapping on Romulus. The movie looks gorgeous. Set design, excellent. The the practical effects and, and how it combines with some of the CG they did, really, really good. Uh, there is that one exception. I think you've probably heard about this, that there's uh, the final act and then there's a bit of CG in the final act that it's jarring because it looks very obviously CG. And it's not great. Uh, speak of the final act, a bunch of people have said, oh, wait till you see the final act. This is the craziest final act you've ever seen in any movie. I did not think it was that special of a final act. In terms of crazy factor, I don't know what other movies these <laughs> influencers or social media people have seen before, but this was quite tame. Um, in terms like now that I'm talking about it, uh, in terms of like the actual scares and the, and the scare factor and the action, uh, that's that's where that's an area where I will commend Romulus on. Uh, I will say they had a couple good action set pieces in this movie. Uh, Rain, the main character, gets to show some ingenuity. Uh, in a couple spots, like she's pretty like bland and just like runs around and complains and cries. But then, you know, as we get to the climax, she all of a sudden, you know, gets these bright ideas and uh, it makes for some interesting sequences. Uh, but I will say that she has insane plot armor and it isn't the same way that you know, Rip Sigourney Weaver's Ripley shows resilience and toughness in the movies that she's in, and the especially in the first three Alien movies. And in, in the first three Alien movies, you could really tell that people were thinking things through to try and counter the alien, and things would just not work out in their favor due to dumb luck or just like execution issues, or the alien just outsmarted them, or a combination of the above, right? In Romulus, you know, you think, okay, it's, 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 you know, Rain's run out of luck, she's, she's dead meat now, and then, boom, plot armor device, and then she, she squeaks her way through, and you're just like, what? Like, there's this one very blatant scene where it's just like, okay, there's no way she's gonna survive this, and then, oh, okay, well, no, no, she's good, <laughs> and you're like, What? Uh, I wish, yeah, maybe I'll do a spoiler uh, follow-up to this so we can discuss some of the, the 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 bullshitty scenes in this movie. Uh, but getting back to the, the the good stuff in terms of like the action and the scares, uh, yeah, some some good set pieces. Uh, the, if you like space, like spaceships and seeing cool things happen in space. Also, a couple of very cool sequences showing uh, things happening in, in space. And the, the ship modeling and the effects are just really well done. And uh, I will say, from this director, Fede Alvarez, I don't, I'm not really familiar with his body of work, but I... I, I know about his movies. I know he did the Evil Dead remake, and I know he did uh, Don't Breathe. I had never seen those movies, but I've heard that they're really great and they're quite graphic and visceral. I expected this uh, Ailey Romulus to be a lot more bloody and gory, and I didn't quite get that. I found it to be quite tame. 
every time I, I began sort of like wincing to prepare for something really gut wrenching and graphic to happen, not, it didn't really it didn't really deliver. And so I was definitely disappointed on that note in terms of just like the the blood and gore side of things. Very tame. Very, very tame. Uh, particularly with, yeah, people had built up the final act to be this crazy, insane... I, I expected it to be a blood fest or, or some crazy thing to happen. It, it's just a retread, actually, of some things that happened in other Alien movies. And it wasn't insanely uh, bloody or visceral at all. So, uh, definitely disappointed there. Finally, I know this, this review has kind of went double the length of what I expected it to, or what I had planned for. But I would say there's a, a fair bit of fan service, and it mostly falls flat. There's a returning character from a previous movie. I won't get into details. That's fine. The returning character is fine. The other stuff that he tried to do just comes across as desperate. And there's this one near the end, they do this one very blatant bit of fan service, and the audience just sort of laughed at it. I don't think it had the, <laughs> the intended effect at all. And it just felt awkward. It just felt completely awkward. All this time, I've been forgetting to kind of update the visuals on this video. <laughs> but uh, here is Andy, the android. And here's our, our, our good old uh, friendly neighborhood uh, xenomorph. Okay, one more thing. One more thing, and that is... The whole, like, premise behind this decommissioned research station uh, of Weilun Yutani. This is shown right from the beginning of the movie in the opening credits. They find an alien encased in an asteroid or a meteor or something. They bring it in, they crack it open, and it's like, oh. You see, it's a, a fossil or like a preserved body of a, of a xenomorph. That's the big reveal from the opening sequence. The al That alien is supposed to have survived from a previous movie. And <laughs> you, <laughs> you, when you find out from which movie, you're just going to be like, what the hell? Did, they, did nobody watch... <laughs> the first movie and and witness what happened to that xenomorph it's just like i'm just gobsmacked that they went with that setup anyway long story apparently long alien romulus a decent way to spend two hours if you got nothing going on uh don't don't run to the theater to see this. Feel free to walk. And uh, here, I'll leave you with a final still of cool stuff happening in space. Because why wouldn't why wouldn't cool stuff happen in space in a catastrophic catastrophic manner? Um, you may be left a little bit wanting if you've watched a whole bunch of the other alien movies. And you're hoping for something that approached the original three or four films. For me, Romulus fell, falls way short of the greatness that is Alien and Aliens. And at this point, I'm thinking that's never going to change. No movie is ever going to touch those original two movies. And I'm not just saying that out of nostalgia rose tinted glasses. I routinely rewatch those movies, say every couple of years. They hold up. They hold up fantastically. And they're just, what do you call it? Like once in a generation movies. 
you know, right place at the right time, right directors. They're unicorns. Alien Romulus is not one of those unicorns. I would say it's still better than Alien uh, Resurrection, but just by a little bit. It lacks Alien Resurrection's charm and creativity. Um, I'm not sure where it stands against Alien 3, but the fact that I have to think about it should tell you a lot about the overall quality and the overall experience and emotional payback you're going to get from watching Romulus. It's not the bee's knees, although a lot of people in the mainstream media is going to be gushing about it. Um, I was a little disappointed. Thank you very much for watching and listening to me speak about Alien Romulus for such a long time. Uh, I don't do a lot of reviews on this channel, and this is probably going to be... I don't do a lot of movie reviews on this channel. This is probably going to be one of the only ones I ever do, because I'm such a fan of the, the franchise. But thank you very much, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.